other side. I'm Will, and today I want to talk about the novel Star Wars Aftermath. I've really been looking forward to this book. I wanted to see what the new Star Wars canon was going to be like, how they were going to connect Return of the Jedi to Force Awakens. I was hoping for something like Grand Animal Thrawn series. There's, you don't get any of that. You don't get any of that. You get a new group of rebel fighters. Um, you get one small chapter with Han and Chewie in it, and they're running off to Kashyyyk to rescue some Wookiees from the little remnant of empire that's still there. Mon Mothma's in the book. She's the new chancellor of the New Republic. Yep, the, the rebels did become a new republic. Wedge basically spies looking for imperial remnants here, there, or wherever. Admiral Akbar and General Maydeen are in the book, but they're just doing the Admiral Akbar, General Maydeen things they were doing in Return of the Jedi. Uh, most of this book, like I said, focuses around a new group of characters. One of them is a former imperial officer who was on Endor that saw everything go up in flames. One's a rebel pilot who survived flying out of the Death Star, and she's on this outer rim planet looking for her son, who's a junk dealer. And then we have a bounty hunter that is searching for one of the Imperial leaders who happens to be on the planet, because all what's left of their fleet has gathered outside of this planet on the outer rims, and the Imperials are cussing and discussing what to do next. That's what this book focuses on. The Empire and what they're going to do, and this small group of rebels trying to get them off their planet. And there's a blockade set up, and they can't get transmissions out. You know, we saw that on Naboo. I didn't really care about any of the new characters that they introduced. And there was only a couple conversations in this book that I really cared about. One was with Mon Mothma and her advisors, and she talks about wanting to reduce the New Republic's military. She doesn't want the power that Palpatine had. She doesn't want the New Republic to have an army with that much power. Um, and her advisors think it's crazy. You need to finish the Empire while you have the chance, but she just wants to reduce it and let the other planets and systems take care of themselves. And then the New Republic will come in and help them if they really needed them. So that kind of sets up maybe how things, how this First Order comes about. Anyways, the Empire just bickering leaders. There's a couple generals there. There's an admiral, and there's a Grand Moff who actually wasn't given the title. He took it. He doesn't even survive in the book. Um... But they just spent a lot of time arguing, you know, what's our next move? He wants to go and attack the rebels and the admiral. She's like, no, we're not going to do that. One guy, the most interesting part in the book was the one dude that was an advisor to the emperor. And he says, you know, we should take our fleet and go far out as deep into space as we possibly can go. Because the emperor had been sending researchers out there. And he says, we need the dark side. We need a Sith Lord to rally the troops together again. We need the dark side of the force to make us powerful again. He was the only guy that made sense. Um, then there's one little snippet where this old lady is trying to buy Darth Vader's lightsaber. Some dude um, has got a red lightsaber and he says it's Darth Vader's. This lady's been searching for it and she buys it from him and he asks, what are you going to do with it? And she says she's going to destroy it. That's all you get of that. The book bounces from planet to planet, so we get to see resistance fighters fighting on Naboo, resistance fighters on Tatooine, resistance fighters on Coruscant. We don't use the word rebels anymore. They're the resistance. Um, and they're little snippets. You, you're introduced to a bunch of characters, and then you go on to another planet, and I can't remember the name of the resistance fighters on Naboo. None of them. I know they were orphans. Anyways... I'm sure it wasn't Chuck's fault. I'm sure Disney's like, we're only going to give out little bits of information. The one little nugget that they give us is Jakku, just about the end of the damn book. And this guy is trying to get away from the war. He goes to Jakku, the furthest planet from anywhere. Furthest planet he could get away from the war. And he, you know, he lost his wife, he lost his child, and he just wants to just get away from it all. And he's having a conversation with the bartender, and he's talking about the um, miners on Jakku and the scavengers. And, you know, you kind of get the landscape for Jakku. Like, it's worse than Tatooine, if, if it could get any worse than that place. Uh, other than that, you know, if you're wanting to just pick up a Star Wars novel and you want to read a new, new adventure of a group that reminded me a lot of Star Wars Rebels, it did. The group really reminded me a lot of Star Wars Rebels then pick up the book. You'll enjoy it. But if you're looking for, you know, the continuing relationships between Han and Leia and, and you know, what's Luke going to be doing, it's not in here. I would just save the 20 bucks and go to the comic book store and pick up Shattered Empire because they're on the cover, so I'm assuming they're in the comic book. Um, I have to give this book thumbs down. I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't really give a shit. 
Uh, but anyways, that's my review on Star Wars Aftermath, and I'm out. May the Force be with you.